My dad's terrible. He takes me to the mall. He makes my breakfast. He does my laundry. And you're just never... Why are you drinking my coffee? And you appreciate everything you've done with this whole thing, but if I lose, I just... No, no, no. Need to... Don't even talk like that. Okay, but there's a chance that I will. A really good chance. Kaylee Ryan is just more popular. Sweetheart, just the fact that you're running is enough to make me proud. Okay? I'm being dead serious. I would have never had the courage to do that when I was your age. In fact, that's something that your mother would have done. Really? Really? So just go in there and give it your all and, you know, swing for the fences and do your best and all those other uplifting sayings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to do great. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> so remember, you have your cue cards. If you get nervous, just look down. You're going to do great. I have full faith in you. Thanks, Dad. You're gonna knock him dead. Say hi to Uncle Nicky for me. I will. Call me as soon as you find out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello, family pairs. Hey, Tess. Hey, Nat. Give him hell. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Because you didn't have me as treasurer. I promise 
if you vote Kaylee as treasurer, senior prom will be bomb. And my dad is an investment banker. So vote Kaylee Ryan. Because handling money is a family business. Thank you. Natalie, you're up. again for the tardiness, Mr. Woodrow. Well, Bruce Cahill tells me you're a reliable man. If there's one person I trust in this life, it's my lawyer. As you can see, the architect didn't even break ground on the pool. And the pergola design was a disgusting eyesore. And the IRS got a hold of him before he could even build the thing. Now, this house is just incomplete without a pergola. Pergola. Am I right? Oh, yeah, it's just awful without a pergola. Well, you boys can build, right? So we certainly can, Mr. Woodrow. Whatever you need, we got you. Well, naturally, I'm going to need to clear whoever you bring onto my property. Naturally, sir. But it's just us. Mr. Woodrow, why don't we go inside and discuss what look you're going for? I'm going to treat you guys to the best iced tea you've ever had. Peaches! Peaches! Let's get some iced tea for these boys. girl. I love the bit about protecting our future. You sound like a superhero. It was my dad's idea. I felt like an idiot up there. Well, I mean, the brain dead slut's probably gonna win, because that's life. But still. <sighs> Speak of the devil. did a good job on our speech. Think they're breaking up? For the millionth time this month? Probably. Who cares? She finds out about the election. I haven't heard from her, and I'm just worried she lost, you know? She lost, she lost. She's a tough girl. I know, but the student office looks really good on a college application. So do straight A's. She needs the scholarship, Nikki, just like we need to get a job like this, okay? I mean, we can't keep fixing Agnes Mason's sink every other week for a slice of pie. You watch your mouth about that pie. That's good pie. And stop worrying about Natalie so much. Lucky for you, she takes after the barn side of the family. That's exactly what worries me, by the way. What? Nothing. Natalie. I think they're just a little blinded right now, but the more they attack each other, the closer they get. Looks like someone's been reading ahead again. Good afternoon, students. Principal 
Temple Henry's here with the results of today's very close elections. Our new school president, Samuel Cahill. Vice President, Catherine Morelli. Treasurer, Natalie Parrish. Secretary. <laughs> Stand up, guys. Stand up. Come on. Considering she's so far ahead in reading, maybe the new treasurer has time in her schedule to cheer on the hockey team tonight? I'm not really a big hockey fan. Want to know a secret? Hey. Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's a party in my house afterwards. That sounds fun. It's just that I kind of already have plans, so... Hey, you can bring your friends. The more the merrier. Uh, Who are you hanging with? Oh. Um... Well, it's just that it's my dad. <clears throat> so... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Congratulations. It's treasure. Thanks. Um, maybe I'll see you later. What a sleazeball. Asking you out like five minutes after he broke up with Kaylee? <sighs> Honestly, Nat, I don't know how you two used to be a couple. Tess. He kissed me on the cheek once when we were five. Besides, he didn't ask me out. He asked me to the hockey game and to the party after. And what did you tell him? That I had plans with my dad. Right. <laughs> hey, did you tell him about the big news yet? Oh, shoot. I'm supposed to call. Or... Sorry. You know, these things, they're, they're, they're just popularity contests. You don't think I'm popular? No, 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 no. What I mean is, I mean that they, they never pick the smartest or the, the most over, you know, they never, what? <laughs> No. 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 Yes? Really? Yes. You swear? Oh, my gosh. That's so great. I'm so proud of you. Good job. Oh, man. You deserve an Oscar. Thank you very much. You want to join us for the celebration tonight? Uh, nah, you two enjoy. I hate that too. Cannot believe no. That's so and the winner reaps for reward the world famous Martin Parrish. <laughs> Monster Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You're a winner today. But now you lose. Dad. Something's wrong. What? I put I put too much uh, syrup on it. No. No, it's great. It is 
Mm-hmm. Great. But. What? I kind of want to do something fun tonight. Oh, wait a minute. You want a different game, right? Well, there's this hockey game this afternoon, and I thought maybe it would be a good thing to go and say thank you to everyone because of the election and, right? I get it. Do some glad handing, kiss some babies. That sounds fine. Okay, well, I'll go change. told me you were coming, I would have brought another seat for you. Oh, that's all right, Bruce. <laughs> nice to see you, Julie. Hey, we heard Natalie's a big winner today, too. Yes, yes, I guess she is. So she's going to be working for Sam now, huh? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we never see you with these things. Yeah, well, Natalie wanted to come, so it was either here or, you know, would stay home and draw blueprints. I can't believe you made me come here. It's one game. Hey, Natalie. Maybe you should dip into the school treasury and buy yourself a shirt of things. Maybe you should dip onto your trust fund and buy yourself a brain. Crap. My mom's shift ends in 10. I have to go pick her up. Are you okay? Yeah. Hockey was never this big when we were in high school, was it? It's hard to say. We weren't the kind to care too much. I'm freezing. I'm gonna go get us some hot chocolates. No whipped cream, right? That's right. Well, let's talk shop. Jimmy Wood. So everything went really well today. Oh, that's great. He really likes your style. He's not so keen on your brother-in-law, though. I had to vouch for him. Well, I'm really grateful for what you're doing, Bruce. I'm not doing anything right. I'm just introducing a hard-working friend to a client who needs some hard work done. And a lot more is going to come from this. Once the neighbors see this beautiful building being built, 
They're all going to love them. That's what it's like in Deer Hills. I hope so. Thanks, man. <laughs> you too. <laughs> There's the guy. Good job. Uh, thanks. Great game. Thanks, Mom. Uh, Great game, Sam. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dad, I invited some people over. Is that okay? Um, if it's a school night, I don't think so. I'll let him have some fun. He's earned it. Homework's done. Yeah. You coming, Nat? Uh, is that okay, Dad? Um, uh, sure. If Mr. and Ms. Cahill are okay with it, I guess that's fine. You can ride in my car. Okay. Don't worry, Mr. Parrish. I'm a good driver. Is this you? Yeah, that's me. I'm really glad. I'm gonna pick you up at 11, okay? Why, thank you. to get home, get off. I know we're trying. Dad, get off. Huh? Honey, oh. Dad. come here.
party. Hey, I was just finishing up my shift when I saw Natalie. Is she okay? She's unconscious, but stable. Alcohol poisoning. But we'll keep the oxygen flowing and flush her system out with vitamins and she'll bounce right back. Listen, Mark, does Natalie have a boyfriend? A boyfriend? No. Why? Just the admitting nurse when she examined her found some blood. Okay, did somebody hurt her? And, uh, don't jump to conclusions. We have a detective on his way down just in case any accusations arise, but at this point it's strictly precautionary. Whatever you need, but I just... When can I see my daughter? Soon. Soon. In the meantime, I'm required to give you this. Take it easy. I'll be back, okay? Take it easy. Sorry to interrupt. I'm Detective Wilshire. Martin Parrish. Natalie, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, you can ask her a few questions. Yeah, Martin, why don't you come to my office for a couple of minutes, huh? Natalie's going to be fine. Her story is that nobody did anything wrong. The body examination corroborates there was no sign of a struggle. There's no indication that this was non-consensual sex. But you said there was blood. There was. It was her first time, Martin. Sometimes kids don't know their limits, especially when alcohol's involved. Who did this to her, Mr. Parrish? To be clear, no one did anything to Natalie, do you understand? Uh, do you know a boy named Sam Cahill? Yeah. Natalie says that the sex was consensual. Oh, man. Here. She changes her story. You give me a call. So you know him personally? Yeah, I treated his wife, Sarah. Bone cancer. She died when Natalie was four years old. That girl's all he's got.
can I make you some food? Because you got to be hungry, and then, um, then we can talk. Pink Coot is really tired. Okay, but, I mean, we can talk, right? I'm just really tired. Okay. Why? What have you heard? Well, what everyone else has. He spent the night in the hospital. What? How? Well, they said that the cops came to Sam's house and broke up the party after you ended up unconscious. You want to talk about it? I have nothing to say. Natalie. Careful, guys. Miss Light right here might vomit on your shoes. <laughs> Gotta get to class. So, it was just alcohol poisoning then? She's okay now? She seems to be, yeah. Oh. Great. Great, Martin. I mean, what a relief. We had a real scare up here. With the cops knocking down the door in the middle of the night and all that. You have to know, I had no idea. When Sam said he had friends coming over, I, I had no idea. No, of course not, I know. But I, I, still, I, you could have... I just feel so bad about the whole thing. You let them hang in the basement, you trust that they're not up to no good, and then the cops show up and it's a whole big mess. I'm just so glad that she's okay. She just wants things to get back to normal. Yeah, these things happen. We all just have to move on, right? Speaking of which, I just got off the phone with James Woodrow. He doesn't want to wait any longer. He asked if you and Nick can start tomorrow. Uh, that's great, but we, we don't even have the plans laid out yet. It doesn't matter. You just head on up and start mapping out your plans on the clock. And listen, if there's anything else that Julie and I can do, you let us know. There is actually just one more thing. Um, maybe Detective Schaefer told you that they had to test Natalie with a, uh, with a rape kit. <laughs> to mention that. Probably because it didn't amount to anything. It's just that... Is Natalie saying that Sam... No. No. Not at all. It's... It's just a precaution. All right. All right. Anyway, I just, um... I thought you should know. Of course.
So, how's school today? Did you know that the police went to the Cahills after I went to the hospital? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I knew that. Did you tell them to? No, I didn't tell them to. But you told them where the party was. Honey, I... I told him everything that I knew. What? Everyone's talking. They're just concerned. Why? Why can't everyone just mind their own business? So there's a B-movie marathon at the Prestige. Thought maybe we could go, you know, do our own voiceovers. I have a lot of homework. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe some other time. Should try a chicken, it's good. Just not really hungry. You're around much anymore. Yeah, sorry. Tess, you know you can talk to me, right? Yeah, no. Natalie hasn't really been acting like herself lately. Huh. Look, I'm just trying to understand what's going on. 
And she's not talking to me. Has she said anything to you about that night at all? She's been pretty much avoiding me and everyone else ever since. What about Sam? What? Look, I don't want to get anyone in any trouble. You won't get anybody in any trouble, I promise you. So the, the day after the party, I saw Natalie and Sam in the hall. He, he was chasing after her. He was trying to talk to her. And he grabbed her. How did he grab her? Her arm. Look, I mean, she was trying to get away from him. He grabbed her. But then she pulled away and, and ran off. I don't know. It's probably nothing. Yeah, probably. Uh, hi, Detective. This is Martin Parrish. I, uh, Natalie's father, I brought her into the hospital for, um... I remember you, Mr. Parrish. What can I do for you? Well, you, you said to give you a call if anything changed. And, um, well, I've, I've been seeing symptoms and Sam Cahill, he grabbed Natalie in school and it sounded pretty rough and I just thought that it might be relevant. Natalie told you this? No, no. Her, her, her best friend, um, Tess Gertie, she saw the whole thing. Okay, well, um... I'm afraid it's only relevant if Natalie's changed her story about what happened that night. Otherwise, it's just a couple of kids. No, no she has. I'm sorry? Yeah, Natalie, she has changed her story. Okay. Okay, well, uh, then we're gonna need to get her on the record, uh, giving her side. Okay, well, see, the, the thing is, is that I don't, um, I don't think that she's ready for that quite yet. She, it's a bit overwhelming, and I'm the only person that she's talking to about it. Um, so, I just don't want to rush her. But I also read that it's important to start these investigations as soon as possible, so I just thought that if I called you that we could start the... I understand. Uh, listen, I'll bring Sam Cahill in tomorrow. I'll get his side of the story in full detail. Once we have that, then maybe Natalie will feel a little more comfortable telling her side. I'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. Tell us in your own words what happened the night of the party. 
You're saying he's not here to actually testify. He's here on his own volition to stand this case. I'm just, just trying to get to the bottom of what happened that night. Now, neither you or I were in that room to give any sort of response about what it was. So I need to hear from Sam exactly what happened. You, but you look so peaceful. Fish won't bite all day, though. You're going fishing? Nope. We're going fishing. Dad, I don't know. Lake Hopakong. It's where your mom and I used to go when we were a little bit overwhelmed or stressed. It's a relaxing kind of place, and you're going to love it. So get dressed. Okay. Okay, so I have it unlocked. Wait, is this locked or not? Still, I can't tell. Yeah, you're good. So I'm gonna cast first. You ready? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, and then lock it. Watch the, there you go. Nice. Oh, well oh, oh. done. And then on, there you go. All right. Now what? Now we wait. It's kind of boring, isn't it? If by boring you mean relaxing, then yes, it is incredibly boring. How's student council going? It's fine. Have you started planning the winter formal yet? Unfortunately, yes. Sophomores get to go to that dance? They're asked by a junior or senior. Ah, that's right. That's how I first went, you know? What? I thought you met mom at graduation with the famous flying cap story. <laughs> we did. I went with Julie. Julie. Cahill now, Rogers then. You never told me that you dated Miss Cahill. That was a long time ago. Besides, your mother was my first real girlfriend. Julie and I, we were just casual. Dad, ew. I'm just saying I know how it is at that age. Sometimes things don't feel so black and white. Get confusing. There's a lot of peer pressure. Okay, Dad. Okay. Just saying if you want to talk to me about it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do I do? What okay. do I do? What do all I do? All right, all right, all right. We uh we got a fish on. That's good. So, so what I want you to do is we're gonna tire them out, okay? This is just a matter of waiting the fish out. We're gonna okay. exhaust him. So when I say go, I want you to set the hook, and that just means give it a little tug. Okay. Set, set the hook. Just pull that. Good. Now you got him. Okay. Okay. Now just uh. Come here, buddy. All right, here. I want to reach out like that. Huh? So pretty. Here, pet him. Oh, 
Can't argue with that. <laughs> What's the matter? I think I just spend too much time in the sun. Okay. Why don't you just uh, go take a shower and I'll prep the feast. Okay. Don't do too much without me, though. I want to learn the whole process. Got it. Natalie, you're not talking to me, and I just figured I'd... So you lied to the police? No, I... Look, I just feel like you're maybe a little confused. I'm not confused. You are... You, okay, you're not acting like yourself. You're moping around. You're, you're acting down. You're That's not... That's because you couldn't take care of me that night without getting the whole world involved. Now I'm the girl who partied too hard, who went to the hospital, then broke up the party. Let me ask you a question. No, no, no. Listen. How do you think it feels to be driving down the middle of the road at night and seeing your daughter swaying all over the place and then slurring her words? You're vomiting I all over... I was drunk, Dad. That's what happened to Not to people. people like you. I acted my age for once in my life, and I end up with you, the police, doctors interrogating me while my head is still spinning. Here's what I'm asking you, okay? If you're ready to talk about it, I'm ready to listen. You are not listening to I me. I am listening you to you. You are not listening to me. I had sex with Sam Cahill. Okay. He didn't force me to drink. He didn't force me to do anything. I asked him to take me upstairs. I had sex with him because I wanted to. And yeah, I've been down. Because losing your virginity is supposed to be a special memory. Not some big public circus that you are only making worse. Baby, no. Fix no! No! Don't baby me! I am not your baby girl anymore, so stop treating me like one! No, 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 no. No. You don't you don't get to say that, okay? You didn't even know your mother. You need to stop putting her on a pedestal. Because she wouldn't do anything. Do you understand? You can stop that right now.
Julie? Martin? Yeah. Look, I'm sorry to call you this late. I was just... I was hoping that maybe we could get together and talk. Martin, I don't think that's a really good idea. Bruce had to take Sam down to the station. I, I know. I just, um... I don't have anybody to talk to right now, and I, um... I just need somebody to talk to. Please. Okay. I guess I can get away for an hour or so. Where shall we meet? so weird. I just don't have anyone else that I can talk to now. And okay. I'm really scared. I need your help. Okay. What do you need? nicer car in high school. <laughs> I was worried we were going to run into some kids out here. Yeah, I don't think these kids use it the same way we used to. <laughs> yeah, not when they have a basement, a comfy couch. Martin. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It was my house. Julie, I didn't ask you here to talk about that. I, uh, I promise. So, is everything okay? Is Natalie okay? Yeah, yeah, Natalie's... No. Everything's not okay. Natalie just started walking. Sarah decided that she wanted to do something different. She said that being a mom was a lot harder than she thought, so she wanted to try something new. So she started taking these pottery classes up in Walden every Thursday from five to six. And every few weeks, she would bring home a new vase or a bowl or something. And I'd say, wow, honey, this looks really great. You know, you're doing so good. We should look into getting a kiln, put it in the house for you, you know. I just wanted her to feel good about it. I wanted her to feel proud about something. So this one week. She came home with this really pretty yellow vase. And she said that she thought it would look beautiful on the window with some sunflowers in it. So the next morning I did that. I went through some sunflowers and I put them in the vase and I put it on the window. And she was right. I mean, it, it looked beautiful. Later that day when 
Natalie got home from school. She had a friend over in there roughhousing, and they bumped the vase and fell off the window, and it hit the kitchen floor, and it shattered in like a thousand pieces. So I was mad. I kept thinking, what am I going to tell Sarah? She's going to be so upset, and she worked so hard on this thing. cleaning it up and when I was done I saw this one little shard left and I picked it up and I turned it over and had a sticker on it the sticker said nine dollars and ninety nine cents at least you got a good deal on it was a really pretty face. You know that place, the Pink Motel, up on Route 14? Real flashy one with the, yeah, the big neon sign in front. When I first saw the guy, I was actually disappointed. I just expect him to be this young, slick kid, you know, but maybe I thought it helped make sense of everything, he, but he was just this guy, he was like this normal guy, this average guy. Did you confront Sarah? She said that he made her happy and that she was ready to run off with him, but then uh, she got sick. Does Natalie know about any of this? No, I, uh, I figured it was hard enough being raised without a mother, so I didn't want to get ready. Bad memories, but... The point is, I wasn't enough for Sarah. She needed more. And what if Natalie needs her mother now and there's nothing I can do? And what if I can't do anything about it? What if I'm not enough? The strongest man I have ever known. The strongest. And you have all this love that you share. I just want to take care of her. You know, it's all I've ever known how to do. And if I can't do that, I mean, who am I?
about Sam. I don't even know if he likes me. Especially with how I've been acting and everything going on right now. Don't you think you ought to figure that out first? Talk to him, Natalie. If you don't think it'll work out between you two, there is another option. Natalie? Where are you going? I'm getting a ride to school. What? So, you're finally ready to talk? Yeah. Look, I'm sorry that I've been avoiding you. I was... I was just really embarrassed about breaking up the party, and I kind of figured that you were mad at me anyway. No, I don't care about the party. I spent all of yesterday at the police station being questioned for rape. What did you tell them? I didn't tell them anything. You should. What do you want me to say? The truth? I mean, we, we were both really tanked, right? Right. Look, I, I, I'm not like you. Okay, I'm not gonna get into college on my grades. I need this hockey scholarship. If the coach at Boulder hears even one word about it, it's gone. Look, we will make sure that everyone knows this isn't true, okay? you a message uh, this morning. Well, we didn't get your message because we were driving here to work. So would you please just tell us what the hell's going on right now? I've decided to take the project in a different direction. <laughs> you decided to change the plans that you approved of, that we started working on, because you weren't happy with what we were doing? Mr. Is Mr. that Mr. it? Martin. Martin. We've got the contract. Screw him. Well, so is ass. Come on. I wouldn't recommend that. That's right. You want to advise that because you have such great representation. Isn't that right? It's not worth it. Come on. Come on. Hey, good luck working for this prick. Oh, he's 
smokes. For a moment there, I think you're actually going to take them out. Did you know? Uh, we were going to have fire today? How could I possibly I'm know not that? Sure. What about her? She was your sister. She must have told you something. She must have confided in you. Did she... Did she tell you anything? Did you know? What the hell are you talking about? Nothing. I'm gonna drive you home. Yeah, the, the problem with that is Coach Cran needs the gymnasium every day from 3 to 6 p.m. for basketball practice. So, I guess we'll look into other venue options. It's a good meeting today, guys. like the student council's here to bust us. <laughs> no one cares about you, Kaylee. Didn't you figure that out when the president dumped your ass? I heard you spent a night in the hospital, Parrish. Yeah? What was that like? The food sucked. in your mind. James Woodruff fired me today. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't believe that's the first time that you're hearing of it. What are you insinuating? I think you're punishing me. I'm the one who got you that job which means it would be just as easy for you to take it away from me. Bruce, I understand that you might be upset with me. Hey, wait, wait, I, well, I might be upset about what? I had my concerns about Natalie and Sam, and I, I called the police, and 
I just wanted them to look into it, that's all. And so you think this is what? You accuse my son of rape, and then I take away your job? Bruce, I need the money. I need it. I'm sure. You'll find out at work. But it seems like you're no longer welcome in Deer Hills. Can I just ask you one more question? Did you buy them the liquor? Or are you just such a generous parent that you let them have some out of your own personal stash? So we're back to this again. Your daughter can't hold her alcohol, and that makes me a bad guy because I'm not overbearing like you, because I don't keep tabs on my kids every single move. If you did, then my daughter wouldn't your be... Your daughter the... what? Natalie is fine. She's fine. You're the one losing it. You want to know why you lost your job? Woodrow says that ever since your daughter got sick, you've been screwing up, making mistakes, working half pace. <laughs> he says your half-wit brother-in-law is the only one holding the thing together. And still I stood up for you. Until yesterday. I'm sorry if I was no longer so forgiving after I spent an entire day listening to my son defend himself oh. to the police. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure you were plenty helpful in his defense. I bet... Don't that... you point your fingers at me because your daughter's a slut! She was going to leave us, Natalie. Why wouldn't you tell me? Natalie, you didn't need to know about all that stuff, okay? I wanted you to feel loved, like you had a good mother. Well, I needed a father, and you lied. I did. I was, look, I was just scared, okay? Of what? Of what? What? Say it. Say it. Say it, Dad. Say what? You were scared that if I found out, I would turn out just like her. Don't you say that. That's not true. Well, guess what, Daddy? Your whore daughter already got herself knocked up. What? Oh, 
forte, é. Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you... Tell you? Yeah, why didn't you tell me? That is a great question coming from you right now. All right, here's what we're going to do. talk about this we're gonna figure you know what? this out i think that you have made it very clear that we have needed to talk about a lot of things for a long time but it is too late I'm sorry that my dad attacked you. It's okay. Are you? Hmm. Okay. I need to ask you something. differently afterwards. But I really like you, Natalie. I need to ask. I need to tell you something. Hey, sweetie. What's up? Natalie Parrish is here. No, she can't be here, Julie. She needs to leave. Bruce, she's pregnant. These kids, they're both so confused. 
They need help. We should call Martin so that we can all sit down and discuss this. No. We let them cool off for a minute. I'll handle Martin. First, I want to talk to my son. Sammy? Hey, have a seat. So Natalie's spending the night, huh? Yeah. I know you, I know you don't want me talking to her dad. It's just complicated. Because she's pregnant. Your mom overheard. You're a good guy. You care about this girl? Yeah. Good. Because you and Natalie both have bright futures ahead of you if you just make the right decision now, if you just nip this in the bud before it's too late. What do you mean? Well, there's a clinic in Milltown. You're going to take Natalie first thing in the morning, and they'll take care of it. It's early enough, quick and easy, like it never even happened. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's what she wants. Sam! That girl doesn't know what she wants. It's up to you to convince her to do what's right. What about Mr. Parrish? Doesn't he have to give permission or something? Legally, he's got to be notified. But there's something called a judicial bypass. But look, you don't have to worry about that. I'll take care of that. Do you understand? together. Natalie, please.
property. Bruce! Go back inside. You didn't tell him? You said you talked it over. Talked what over? Bruce, what did you do? I gave our kids a solution. Julie, please, where are they? Julie, don't! The clinic in Milltown. Marty. You're only a few weeks in, there's no operation involved. Uh, what I am going to do is prescribe you two oral medications. The first one is called Mifeprost. That one you take immediately. And what that does is break down the walls of your uterus so that your pregnancy can't effectively continue. After that, you're going to take something called Mystrom Now, that's what it calls Parish. She left about 20 minutes ago. She took my car. Is there anywhere that she would have gone that you can think of? No. Call your mother, Sam. No, I'm coming with you. No, you're not. She's left for good, maybe. Maybe this is what I deserve. Mr. Parrish, maybe she's just off thinking somewhere. Don't, don't, don't presume to know her, Sam, or know where she is, okay? You're just a kid. Now move! That's why you're going home. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry this is happening. But I'm here. I'm not running. We, we were just trying to do the right thing. And Natalie was scared. She said she didn't want to end up like her mother.
seat taken. Follow mom, didn't you? Natalie, my feelings about your mother are complicated. So you knew she was gonna leave us. But you stayed with her the whole time in the hospital anyway. boyfriend found out that she was dying, he left. She didn't have anybody. You've got a stupid big heart. <laughs> you know that, right? But I shouldn't have lied to you. you to hate her. Well, I don't hate her. But I don't love her either. I mean, how can you really have any feelings about someone that you never really knew? All I ever really knew was you. Bum luck. We used to make good Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> I have a date to the winter formal. Do you think I'm throwing my life away? Nah, it's just a dance. future is going to be as good or as bad as you want it to be. Oh, what if I'm a bad mom? You won't be. That I'm certain of. you're okay. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. Daddy. 
just be careful.